This album began life as a concert programme. I think the first time I played it was in beautiful concert hall in Perth, in Scotland. And gradually, through having sort of private relationships with composers, I told them about the project and they were keen to write something that might end up on the CD. So gradually it became longer and longer until we reached over 70 minutes of, of music. But I think what's nice about it is that the pieces are, are so different and it just shows that contemporary composition is alive and well and nothing stagnant about it at all. There's still, there's still so many different directions and different approaches possible for writing for, for solo violin. The album starts with Bach's mighty Chaconne, which is one of the monuments of, of the violin repertoire. It's one of the longest single movements and, and one of the hardest movements there is. So it felt pretty daunting recording it. I mean, it, it's a sort of thing that you have to handle with, with respect. There are a million ways that you can play it. There's so many different styles that you can play it in, so many different tempos. My approach to it has always just been to make it sound like it's being improvised on the spot. And in that sense, I guess it, it sort of fits with the jazz pieces that come later on the album. When I came to choosing the order, obviously we were going to start with the Bach and end with the Parker stroke Davis, but ordering the nine contemporary pieces, there was a really lovely thing that sort of just happened when we were listening to the the edits of the, of the CD and we discovered that there was this logical progression. I wanted to find a way where the tracks would sort of linger over the silence so that it would encourage people to listen to the whole thing as one and hear the journey from Bach to Parker. So to try and do that more successfully, I put the tracks in an order where the last note of the previous track is the same as the first note of the following track. In almost every instance that, that happens, but a lot of thought went into the order to try and make this arc. I've been friends with Nico Muley for over 10 years. We met on, a, on an exchange programme when I was at the academy and he was at Juilliard. And we immediately hit it off. And I loved his, his music always, right from the beginning, and managed to commission an electric violin concerto that he wrote in 2008, which we recorded subsequently with Aurora. So he's a sort of long-term collaborator and friend, and Long Line is a piece that I've been playing for 10 years years regularly, so it was really an obvious choice for the CD. Graham Williams writes about his piece, Mr. Punch, that it's a fragmented fantasy characterization of Mr. Punch, who is unpredictable, violent, and sad by turns. And I'd known Graham for quite a long time and played other pieces by him, quartets and octets, and uh, he wrote this really, really fun, kind of crazy piece for, for this project, so I was really happy to include that.
charged. I first played in Nottingham in a Symphonia Viva concert about eight years ago, and I've discovered that it's a brilliant piece at, at clearing churches. You know, sometimes you have a sort of lunchtime recital at St. Martin in the Fields, and there are various people sleeping on pews. And as soon as they've heard three bars of, of Anna's charge, they're sort of miles away because it's, it's a very angry, very loud, very sort of shouty piece. Really, really fun to play. Not so fun to listen to if you're sleeping and hungover. Nimrod Borenstein's piece, Quasi Yonu Cadenza, it sort of belongs to a kind of Isai tradition. You might not guess that it's composed in 2010 or something. It definitely belongs to a school of composing for the instrument. It's a very technical piece, but it obviously has a lot in common with the bar in its sort of contrapuntal writing. So Ewan Campbell's Two Extremes, they came about because a lady who comes to many of my concerts in London and even further afield also is a big supporter of Ewan's and she organised a meeting between us and was very keen that I should play some of his music. So I met Ewan and he showed me everything all at once, the second movement of the Two Extremes, and I loved it. And then he wrote another movement for the project called Rare Nothings, which couldn't be more different. It's incredibly quiet and you have to sort of turn up the volume to hear anything at all. And then as soon as the second movement comes in, you have to turn it back down because that one's very loud. Aziza Sadakova, her piece is very much her. It's a mixture of fragments which sound like they could be manuscript of bark that's just been discovered, but then in between those really thorny, weird sounds. She's always sort of trying to find new new sounds that are possible on, on a violin and new ways to notate them. She writes the most beautiful manuscripts. Everything's handwritten and beautiful. I, I wish you could see it as well as hear it.
Dai Fujikura wrote his piece Quiz Match very, very quickly, just in the nick of time to be recorded on the album. I knew Dai from an orchestra project some years ago when he wrote this great piece called Benitza Groove, which started with a solo whole page, just solo violin. I was leading the orchestra, so I had to play this fiendish thing. The material from that sort of got reused and expanded on in Quiz Match. It's still absolutely fiendish to play, even though it's only two minutes. Mark Bowden is another composer that I've worked with and been friends with for quite a few years. And this piece, Lines, written a few miles below, started life as a commission by Rombert Dance Company. And it was a really lovely experience for me playing with dancers and seeing the music take shapes, literally, before my eyes. But the piece is really cool. It's in different sections, meant to evoke different passengers who you might meet on the London Underground and there's a backing track it's sort of quite like dance music and all of the sounds that you can hear on that were recorded by Mark on the Underground John Hawkins wrote Bobop, not for me, but for a friend of mine. And it's such a brilliant piece and, and such a, a nice way to morph into Donna Lee that finishes the disc. It's an amazing way of notating jazz. I mean, it comes very, very close to, to sounding like an improvised jazz solo, but it's all, it's all notated. It's a great piece. finishes with some real jazz and it was lovely to be able to involve the bass player Dave O'Brien who, who plays with me in Man Overboard Quintet. It's not really clear if it's by Charlie Parker or by Miles Davis Donnelly. Officially it's by Miles Davis but, but everyone thinks it's by Charlie Parker but it's one of the great bebop tunes and this is the sort of loose adaptation of the solo that Jacko Pastorius takes on this tune on his album Jacko. Mm -hmm. 